Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss integration by partial fraction. We dedicated lesson six and seven uh, to partial fractions. We have been resolving compound fractions into partial fractions. So today we want to make use of what we have been doing lesson six and seven to integrate by partial fractions. Right away, we shall go to example one and see what we do here. So example one tells us to integrate one over x into x squared minus one with respect to x. Okay, so let's see the solution. How do we go about it? This simple. Uh, first things first get 1 over x into x squared minus 1 and resolve this into partial fractions. Now, we have a factor, we have a product of factors in the denominator, but there is something you have to know about this. That is a quadratic and it factorizes. So, this is equal to, before you go ahead to resolve this in the partial fraction is, let's look at this and write it as a and this is 1 over x, okay, into x minus 1 into x plus 1. That's the product of two squares. Now, this is what we take in partial fraction is, okay. This is linear, okay. Much as we are saying x, but it is x either plus 0 or minus 0. So, it is a linear function. So, it is a over x plus a b over x minus 1 plus a c out of x plus 1. Okay. So what do we do? Simple. The next thing we have to do is to find the value of a, b, and c. That's what we are doing in lesson 6 and lesson 7. So the easiest way we say is to multiply through by this. Oh, let me change the color so you guys can see what I'm trying to look at. Okay, so we are saying that the easiest way is to multiply through by this quantity here. Everywhere I multiply through by that, you are going to get 1 is equivalent to a into x minus 1, x plus 1, then plus a b, x into x plus 1 plus c x into x minus 1. Okay, that's what we end up with. Now, how do we find the value of a, value of b, value of c? We we shall expand out to o. The easiest way is to look for, like if you want the value of maybe c or b, we can look for what makes this zero. Okay, now if x equals to 1, we're going to have one is equivalent to, okay, a into zero plus a b, okay, into two, okay, then plus c into zero, because one minus one is a zero, and therefore, what will be b? It means that your b is a half, okay, b is equal to one over two, okay, so, that's, simple i think let's go ahead and find the value of c and the a so we can go ahead and and kill this bracket by substituting if x equals to negative one what makes that bracket is, is, is x is equal to negative one so i have one will be equal to a into zero because it's also here it goes okay plus a b into zero then plus c okay this is going to be a minus c multiplying by a minus two okay because i have cx and i'm substituting x is equal to a negative one so what do we get the c this is two c okay 
So 1 equals to 2C, implying that C is also equal to a half. Okay, C is also equal to a half. So we can go ahead and expand, okay, expand the brackets here, 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 and get the value of, of A because what we are lacking is A. But substituting X is equal to 0 kills this and also kills this. So we can go ahead and substitute x is equal to zero, okay? So if x equal to zero, okay, let me erase this so you guys can see what I'm trying to do. So if x is equal to zero, then I will have one will be equal to minus a, okay? Because it will be 0 minus 1 into 0 plus 1, which is minus A. So what does this mean? This means that A is negative 1. Okay. So having got the value of A, B, and C, then we can see that therefore, our partial fraction, which is X out of X squared minus 1, okay, is now equal to A, which is negative 1 over X plus a B, okay, Okay, which is, and this is going to be 1 over 2 into x minus 1, then plus a c, which is also half, 1 over 2 into x plus 1. And we have resolved into partial fractions. But the question is about integrating. Partial fraction, resolving into partial fraction is, was just a step towards what we wanted to do, okay? It is the method we, we are using to integrate the function. So let's do what they have told us. Integrate one over x into x squared minus one by dx. It's the same thing as integrating negative one over x by dx plus, okay? Integrate one over two into x minus one okay dx plus integral of one over two into x plus one by dx okay so these functions are really easy to integrate when you integrate one over x you end up with natural logarithm so this is my natural logarithm of x okay plus a half natural logarithm of x minus one then plus another a half natural logarithm of x plus a one okay so plus a constant of integration let's write this on next page because we look to be congesting this page we know about a lot of logarithms that talks about adding logarithms you multiply the powers so that's what i'm using here to come up with this result but i can still take this further and write it as a okay write this as a, a natural logarithm of x squared minus one to power half over x then plus a constant of integration that's still a law of logarithm okay i first take this power because this is a difference of two squares it will give me x squared minus one then to power half then this is minus so when you are subtracting logarithm we divide the powers and therefore that's the final answer if you want to simplify that level. All right, let us see example two, okay? Example two. Example two, they want us to evaluate this integral, okay? Uh, what we do first, a solution, okay? Begin by resolving three x plus two out of two, x minus 1 squared into 3 minus x into partial fractions. This is the same as a over 2x minus 1 plus a b over 2x minus 1 squared plus a c over 3 minus x. Okay, this is a quadratic, this is a linear function which is repeated. So the nature of the partial fraction is, you know, we have discussed that and now everybody is at, you know, updated up to this level. 
So let's go ahead and simplify. That's multiplying through by the LCM. You have 3x plus 2 is equivalent to a into, okay, this will be a 2x minus 1 into 3 minus x plus a b into 3 minus x, then plus a c into 2x minus 1 squared. Now, what's our next step? Okay, to get a, b, and c. So if x equals to 3, okay, let's begin by killing this bracket, and then this, we can get the value of c if x is equal to 3. You know, 2 times 3 is a 6 minus 1, 5. 5 squared is 25, okay? So 9 plus 2 is 11, okay? It will be equal to c into 25 okay now now what is the 25 okay what c this means that is c is 11 over 25 if if x equals to a half okay x is equal to a half we'll make this bracket zero and even this is zero. So a half that is three out of two plus a two will be equal to okay. What are we finding here? We're looking for b. B into three minus a half. Okay. So what do we get? Three over two, that is a four plus three, that is seven over two is equal to five b. Okay. 5b out of 2. So what is b? b is 7 over 5. Now what are we left with? Okay, we are left with the value of a. Well, how can we get a very fast? The easiest way to substitute if x is equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, okay, what will happen here? I have 2 will be equal to now, x is equal to 0. That's a minus 3a. Okay. Uh, plus 3b. Okay. Then plus sc. All right. So, we can go ahead and feed in the value of a, b, and c to find the value of a over... 25. So the value of a is 22 over 25. Now, next is just going ahead to substitute a, b, and c, and then we call the integration. So that is the partial fraction. Those are the partial fractions we get when we decompose 3x plus 2 out of 2x minus 1 squared into 3 minus x. So next is to integrate. The, the question talks about integrating from 1 to 2. 1 to 2 by dx. Okay. It will be the integral from, let me create a bracket here, 1 to 2 by, by dx. Okay. So what do we get when we integrate? These are three integrals which you must integrate with a lot of care. Okay. Uh, this goes to natural logarithm. This is not natural. The first one here, let me show you. This will go to natural logarithm. This will not go to natural logarithm. This will go to natural logarithm. Okay? Limits are from 1 to 2. So, what do we get? The first will give us, uh, let me pull out to 22 over 25. Then I integrate 1 over 2x minus 1. That is a half of natural logarithm of 2x minus 1, okay? Now, this is plus 7 over 5. Let me maintain the integral here. This is from 1 to 2, okay? 7 over 5, integrate 2x minus 1 to power negative 2 by dx from 1 to 2. And this other one will give us 11 over 25, then natural logarithm of uh, 3 minus 6, 3 minus 6, 
okay from one to two we can simplify this but as a student be careful i'm going to do this really so quick but as a student you know you have to be careful take your time and simplify okay i know that it two reduces 22 to 11 and there is another 11 out of 25 so i will have this as 11 over 25 then natural logarithm of 2x minus 1 out of 3 minus x okay from 1 to 2 then plus 7 over 5 this is 2x minus 1 to power negative 1 over negative 1 then times a half okay the integral is moving from 1 to 2 okay simplifying this will give me 11 over 25 natural logarithm feed in the upper limit okay that is going to be the 3 okay then minus the lower limit okay feed in the lower limit when you feed in 1 that is 1 out of 2 so natural logarithm of a half and uh, this will be 7 over 15 if I'm not mistaken you try to take your time and do this but that is 7 out of 15 so the final answer will be as 7 over 15 plus 11 out of 25 natural logarithm of 6 that's what I'm getting try it out and see what you end up with example 3 is our last example today so let's look at example 3 and see what they want us to do in example 3 so example 3 what do they want us to do in example 3 they want us to prove that prove that okay when you integrate dx out of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4 you end up with 1 out of 3 into x plus 2 okay plus 1 over 9 natural logarithm of x minus 1 into x plus 2 then plus a constant of integration so what we do first is to factorize the denominator but there is some guidance here when you check this okay substituting x is equal to a negative 2 in the denominator gives us zero so we can go ahead and count a long division okay what do we need to do here so let's look at the solution get x cubed plus 3x squared minus a 4 and divide by x plus a 2 because x is equal to negative 2 negative 2 cubed is a negative 8 okay a negative 2 squared is a 4 that is a, so we end up with a 0 now x cubed divided by x you get x squared okay this is x cubed plus 2 x squared subtract what do you get you get x squared minus a 4 x squared divided by x is plus x so this is x squared minus 2 plus 2x subtract you have minus 2 x minus a 4 now this is a minus 2 this is minus 2 x minus a 4 you get 0 0 so what does it mean it means that x cubed plus 3 x squared minus a 4 okay gives us x plus 2 into x squared plus x minus a 2 okay now we look for two numbers we further factor that quadratic look for two numbers that sums to one and the product is negative 2 okay those numbers are negative 2 positive 2 and negative 1 so what do we get this is x plus 2 into x plus 2 into x minus 1 okay so it can simplify to x plus 2 squared into x minus 1 and when you get here we're almost done so let's go back and partialize 
we can now write that one over okay x cubed plus three x squared minus a four is now equal to one over x plus two squared into x minus a one, which in a partial fraction will be a over x plus two, okay, plus a b over x plus two squared d then plus c over x minus one. Okay, so what do we do next? Multiply through by the LCM, you have one is equivalent to a into x plus two into x minus one plus a b into x minus one then plus c into x plus two squared. Now, if x equals negative two, Let's substitute x is equal to negative 2 and see what we end up with. x is equal to negative 2 will give us 1. We shall get 1 equals 2. Uh, this other first part disappears because negative 2, that bracket, first bracket is equal to 0. So even this disappears, we only get b. Okay, negative 2. So b into negative 3. So this means that b is one negative one out of three okay now if x is equal to one it will make this bucket zero and also this bucket zero it will give us x is equal to one gives us c so one will be equal to nine c meaning that c is equal to one out of nine now if x is equal to zero we have one is equal to uh, minus two a okay plus minus a b minus 2a minus a b okay then c we are substituting x equal to 0 plus 4 c now the task we have because what we are missing is only a you make a the subject 2a is equal to 4 c minus b minus a 1 so what is a 2a let's maintain 4c but what is c that is 4 over 9 okay minus a b and we have got the other third so plus 1 out of 3 okay and then minus 1 so what do we get the LCM is a 9 okay this is a 4 okay plus a 3 minus a 9 equals to 2a okay 7 minus 9 is a negative a so a is negative 1 over 9 so we have the value of a we have the value of b and the value of c what do we do we can now go back and substitute for a for b for c and then integrate so the next step is to integrate integral 1 over x cubed plus dx squared minus 4 by dx the same thing as negative 1 over 9 integrate 1 over x plus 2 by dx minus 1 over 3 integrate okay x plus 2 power negative 2 by dx then plus 1 over 9 integrate okay 1 over x minus 1 by dx so what do we get? This is negative 1 over 9, natural logarithm of x plus 2, okay? Minus, it is now going to be plus 1 over 3, okay, into x plus a 2, then plus 1 over 9, natural logarithm of x minus 1 plus a c. So what happened is, what we do, we combine the natural logarithm. Since they all have coefficient 1 over 9, that can factor out. And we have uh, 1. Let's, let me organize so it looks like they are, what they have given us. 3 into x plus 2, okay, plus 1 over 9. When you are subtracting logarithm, you divide the powers. So this natural logarithm of x minus 1 over x plus a 2, okay, then plus a constant of integration and that's what they have given us so we have got it 
ladies and gentlemen, there are so many questions about partial fractions. And because of time, I cannot work out everything. But as a student, when you get a concept, you begin right away. So let me write down a few questions for you that you can try in your free time as you're having a cup of tea. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of integration by partial fractions. I've given you about three examples, but there is a lot of work ahead, so don't relax. I'll also take this opportunity to thank my subscribers, uh, Mr. Kiria Wairaka College. You always like my lessons. Uh, the headmistress, Madame Hilda. Thank you so much for liking my page and subscribing. And I will urge the rest of us to subscribe so that when I upload a new video, you are always notified. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. This is so important. It is a free knowledge. What you only need is to subscribe and you know you enjoy. Have some mobile data, have some Wi-Fi, enjoy this. So uh, let me hope uh, this is helping you. You are free to inbox me a comment or you are free to comment about a certain lesson that will respond to you immediately. Okay, so thank you so much and have a nice day. Lastly, don't forget to share the links I send to those who could be need. Anybody with a smartphone, with a tablet, with a computer, any gadget that can navigate the internet and open YouTube will always give you this information. Just type in YouTube, type in Erisa, you will see the lessons I've done in the past, and you can, you know, it's self-service. 